Hey guys, welcome to the Friday live stream at Fat Quarter Shop. I have a lot of fun stuff for you today. We're gonna start off with a free pattern. Then we're gonna move to uh, my wrap up plans for 2021 and my quilting plans for 2022. And then I'm gonna show you some what's new stuff and we are gonna have a giveaway at the very, very end. So you're gonna wanna watch the whole thing so that you can enter the giveaway. So I'm gonna start with the very first item. This you might have already seen on Riley Blake's um, website, but I'm gonna show it to you right here. So Riley Blake came out with Follow the Bluebird Sew Along, and it started, I don't know, a month or two ago, and I thought it was super cute. So I thought we could show some of it on this live stream. So if you want this free pattern, you can go to Riley Blake Designs, and it's completely free, and they also put together this free quilt pattern just for us. So if you are making the blocks, now you have a quilt, you can set it in. And there are three free blocks. So you can make the pieced block. And this is reversed so that you could see how you could make the bird a little bit different. So you can make a dark blue bird, a light bird, and I'll read you the skew numbers used in a little bit. This is the paper pieced bird. So if, oh, I'm doing, up, up, actually I'm incorrect. This is paper pieced, <laughs> sorry. This is pieced, so this one's made the same. And then this one is appliqued. So I wanted to show you that so you could make a free you can use this free pattern. It would make a really cute baby quilt, I think. The background fabrics used throughout, I wanna show you, are the Hush Hush, which are background prints from different Riley Blake designers. The birds right here are C120 Riley Aqua. This is C120 Cadet. The little birdie legs, the color is curry. The binding, is uh, 495 slash aqua and this backing is the 11175 patchwork from hush hush and i'm going to show this to you up close and then i'm going to give you a couple of hints if you are making this at home so this one was made by nova and um gina at thread graffiti quilted it and so you can see it's got lines of patchwork but it's not pieced so you get the look of a pieced backing without having to do anything so i love that so again the free pattern for the quilt is available at fat quarter shop it's designed by riley blake and the block patterns are available on riley blake's blog and website so I was gonna give you a couple of tips. So if you were making the applique block, I would start with, they end up at eight and a half. So I would definitely cut your fabric like nine and a half or 10, applique it, and then put the ruler, an eight and a half inch square ruler and just cut around. That way you can center where you think the center is and you can kind of count like one, like three quarters of an inch this way three quarters of an inch this way from the edge, one and a half from here, one and a half from here. That's what I do is I'll make it much bigger. You could even do 10 and a half, and then that way you have lots of room if you wanna center it slightly different. So that would be my tip on the applique. We used a zigzag stitch. We can zoom in to see it, but we just did a tiny, not zigzag, um, buttonhole. Blanket, sorry, I always get that wrong. So we just did a simple blanket stitch and we used Arathil Color 2000 and it just blends right in and we fused this down. And that is the back. And for this, we just used a DMC Embroidery Floss uh, 310. You could also do his legs in yellow if you wanted to. And this is just a French knot with four twists. Now, if you were gonna make the piece block, what I would do here, oh my gosh, I keep showing the wrong one, sorry. This one, if I were doing the piece block, what I would do to make it come out even, and today I really want to um, kind of go over tips and just different things that I do. And what I would do here is I would piece this, 
but when I add these two pieces over here, I would make them bigger. So I would cut this half an inch bigger. I would probably make this just a tiny bit wider here. And then that way when you make it, you can put this on, line up these two and just cut these two and then you'll come out with an eight and a half inch square. On the paper piece, you could do the same thing, but on the paper piece, I would probably just make these two bigger. You could, I guess, make this bigger if you wanted to and then trim down. So if you have any questions on this, let me know. I'm gonna repeat the SKUs again. This is Confetti Cotton's Riley Aqua. This is Cad Cadet Blue. This is Curry. Okay, sorry, Curry. <laughs> it's hard to see. The binding is 495 Aqua and the back, the backing is 11175. Hush, hush. Another thing you could do is you could add eyes here. You could do really, well, I think what would be really cute is after you quilted it, you could add eyes here. You could add like a little button, um, white buttons. That would be really cute. Um, if it's for a baby, I wouldn't put buttons, but there's a lot of things you can do with this. And I encourage you to use all the free patterns that are available out there to, um, you know, so and use your stash another thing that you could do we'll zoom out and i'll give you another idea that you could do another thing you could do is when you're looking at the top you've got the binding but see the binding when you do a stripe one goes one way and one goes the other you could do the birds where you alternate the stripe direction so that it's kind of random and it gives it it'll give it a lot of movement so that's something that you could do and this one we did not put together a quilt kit for it we just used scraps so we started with a fat quarter bundle of the hush hush and then we just bought like a yard half a yard half a yard um, we didn't offer a kit just because we didn't know that this was going to come out and so when it did we were like oh my gosh that's so cute we want to show you um kind of uh you know what you could do with it so we just kind of put it together and I, this is kind of one of those things too where i feel that you don't have to um, buy something, you know, you might, you could just do all, you could make a red, red bird quilt. You could do red quilt, red. You could use a, a lot of people have solid rainbow quilts, solid rainbow bundles at home. So you could do different colored birds. So this is the kind of quilt that I don't think you necessarily have to buy something for. So that's why we didn't do a kit. Um, and the backing right here is, 11175 dash patchwork so that is so pretty and it's a great uh, size of a quilt so now i'm going to show you i'm going to kind of move into uh, my 2021 and 2022 plans <laughs> um, so I wanted to talk about kind of some things I've thought about and how I'm going to wrap up 2021 and then give y'all some hints for 2022. So this year I've been super busy, but when I had my eye surgery, I didn't sew or I didn't quilt for two weeks, two months. What do you mean two weeks? <laughs> that was out of work for two weeks, for two months. So that really put me behind. So when I went back into my sewing room, I felt very overwhelmed and just like, oh my gosh, I'm so behind. So I decided that I was going to end out 2021 with a couple of things. The first thing I did, and I'm going to show you some pop-up pictures of this, is I went in and I cleaned up and de-stashed. So that's the first thing I did. So the first picture is I just organized all of my books my cross stitch patterns, um, just did a lot of organization with my books. And when I organize, it does make me feel um, less anxious. So that was kind of the first thing I did. And then the second thing I did is I went through and organized my fabrics by um, kind of starched, not starched. You can't really see, but those bins, some of them have a little sticker that say starched, not starched. You just can't see it. 
and I kind of destashed. So the next one you're gonna see is I um, went in and destashed. So in the top right, those are my pre-cut squares left over from projects. And the rest of the fabric there is um, different Lori Holt fabrics, Bonnie and Camille fabrics, fig tree fabrics, and then I have a lot of backgrounds there. And I went in and destashed, meaning I got rid of all of the things that I don't think that I would actually use. And that gives me room to make room for the things that I'm going to do in 2022. And then I gave my fabric to my friends that would use it because several of the things I had used the fabric collections a couple too many times. And I mean, I'm not gonna use it, keep using it forever. So my first thing I did after, so first thing I did is I went in and I cleaned my closet. And then I thought, all of my drawers are very full of things that are whips or in process. And I thought, let me try to figure out a way to finish any open project I have. And if I don't finish it, then I need to, at the end of the year, give it to somebody else who can either finish it or gift it to somebody or sell it or whatever. So, the, so kind of when I tackle something like that, the first thing I did is I went to my um, quilt journal, quilting journal. And if it has a check mark, that means I finished it. If it doesn't have a check mark, it's not done. So the first thing that I did is I thought of what is the easiest thing that I could actually finish so that I have more check marks and less open spaces. So my first thing I decided to finish was the summer soiree quilt. So the summer soiree was a free pattern and it's still available by Pat Sloan. Her website is I love to make quilts.com. And with this, I changed mine around a little bit. And I'm going to show you what I did. So, this is upside down. So, I'm going to show it to you here and then I'll show it to you on camera. And then I'll show it to you on here and I'm going to talk through kind of what I did so when I started this quilt I really loved the kitty corn fabric by um, Moda I think the designer is Urban Chicks but I really loved it and was trying to figure out what I could use with it but I didn't need a big Halloween quilt because I need another big quilt like I need a hole in my head so I decided that I could still participate but just make it smaller so I just made my blocks six inches by converting it and then I just made these strips one inches and then one and a half I think but I just basically converted it so the original was 57 by 74 and hopefully I wrote the size in here I might not have no I did so mine ended up 34 by 42 and let's see, this is 9900 color 67. This is 31177-16. And um, when I did that, what I did is I just sat and wrote out my measurements. I, I actually threw those away. I should have kept them, but I didn't. Um, but I got that finished, but when I was done, I didn't have a border. And what I did was I had to add a border and I wasn't planning to and the reason why is on the back I wanted to use this panel and I don't think the panels available anymore I think it's all sold out and not being remade but I wanted this to go on the back and what I did it's a I didn't realize how big this cat was the cat is ginormous can we zoom out a little that as far as it goes okay so this is ginormous and I laid it on the I laid it on the floor and then I put the quilt on top because that's what Gina's gonna have to do when she quilts it and I was like oh my gosh the cat's barely gonna fit like all the way down here I mean the cat with this big pumpkin down here it's barely gonna fit um so I added borders so and I think I just cut three inches, three, three and a half inches. I just make stuff up. Like I just made it up on the spot, but I did that so that when we put this on the back, 
she can center it somewhat. Otherwise, it was going to be too, too small. So I'm excited that this one's done. So that was my, I had six to finish. So this is the first one. And when I made this, I used a fat quarter bundle and I had all of this fabric in my stash. So I, um, and I actually had already bought this. But one thing I wanted to show you that's different, and I think it's kind of cool. One thing that I did that's different is this is going to be the backing. But I thought it would be kind of weird to put my name on the backing because where are you gonna put it? Like in the pumpkin, it just was kind of awkward. So what I decided to do is I sewed it into the sashing strip right here that's in the bottom right. Now it might have looked better if I would have put it over here, like to the side, but I didn't. Um, but I thought, well, that's a good way to use a label, still have a label in there, but um, if that makes sense, like, cause it just, I just thought it would look bad on this. So that's my first finish for 2021. And I will say that sitting and organizing my fabric and cleaning out the drawers really helped motivate me to start finishing stuff. So that is our, my first like finish finish. My next item that I need to work on is bright side. And I'm gonna show that to you. So bright side are the quilt cards that come in the sew sampler box. So I wanted to show you all of the ones that are done so far. Now this one won't wrap up design wise until March, 2022. So I will finish this quilt in 2022, but all the blocks are made. So nothing has to sit in the drawer anymore because I have all my blocks made in advance. And then I'll just wrap this one up in 2022. So So that one is good. And then I made sure I bought all of my background, binding, backing, et cetera, so that I don't run out when I finally get around to finishing it. But this one, that's where this one's at. Now, when I made this, I used Christmas Morning Fabric by Layla Boutique. The original was made and designed, first of all, this was designed by Sherry McConnell. She designed the blocks and the quilt kit. The fabric collection is Happy Days. Oh, sorry. Happy Days by Sherry and Chelsea. So these blocks were made by Teresa. I just wanted to show these to you. And the quilt kits are now sold out, so I apologize for that. Fabric requirements for this pattern, if you're going to buy all 12, are on the Jolly Jabber. And if you are not in the Sew Sampler box and you don't get the quilt cards, you can buy them separately on FatQuarterShop.com. So that is one of my um, kind of wrap up of 2021s. And then the next one, I know you guys are going to be so, so excited to see because I'm so excited to be done. So I'm going to talk through a little bit about kind of my process. So this one started in 2018, 2018, sorry. So three years ago. Oh my gosh, a long time ago. So I started this in 2018. This is the Harry Potter Sew Along from Seriously, I Think It Needs Stitches blog. Her name is Kelly Fannin. And um, what I did was this quilt finishes at 77 and a half by 96 and a half. But what I like to do is I like my sashings to be length of fabric. And I didn't have enough left over to do length of fabric. So that's why it's not assembled all the way. Now next week, I'm going to show it to you completely assembled. And what I decided to do is I wrote down the four sashings I need and the four borders 
the two side borders and the well the two side borders the two top and bottom borders and then the sashing so I write down what I have to come back to and do and I'm going to show you the rows now I made the quilt exactly like she did I think the only thing I changed was the eye color of Harry Potter and of course my son noticed I was like of all the things you notice but my son did oh I forgot to send that photo I'll send it and then we can show it um so my son helped me it's for my son it's going to be one of his Christmas gifts and he helped me lay them out I'll, I'll, we'll show it to you in a second I'm gonna text it to you okay so he helped me lay all of these out so I decided to go ahead and put these in rows I'm gonna show you the rows and I did measure the rows and took an average and then that's what I'm gonna put my sashings at so this is the top row I believe now, I don't know a thing about Harry Potter, so I don't know who these people are. I don't know anything about it. He did tell me he thought that one looked like a emoji poop, and I asked him, I said, well, I can redo it. And he said no, so I'm not sure what it's supposed to be. But he had to lay these out, and then I sewed them. So yeah, the I like the, the HP logo because I know that I know what that is, but I have no idea who that little guy is on the end. And I wanted to put Shannon fabric, which is that really soft, cuddly stuff on the back, because I know he's gonna use it in his bed, and he likes that. So I'm gonna put a very light silver on the back, and I'm gonna bind it with the purple. It's Bella Mauve is the name of it, and I'm gonna use that as the binding. So see right there, that's Harry Potter. I think his eyes are supposed to be green. And then I, I said to him, I said, pick up, because he was helping me. I was like, can you hand me the leaf? And he was like, you mean the broom? And I was like, well, whatever it is. So this took me uh, quite a bit of time to finish. So I had five blocks to finish, plus sewing them together. Oh, maybe this is Harry Potter. See, I don't even know. This is not Harry Potter? No, this is. No, okay, I don't know who Harry Potter is, but. And I didn't even know what that was. I think it's a sword. Anyway, he really helped me finish this, so that's awesome. And I used a 2600 gray thread um, on the, on the, can you show the cam the top, sorry. So, I just use like a gray thread. It's kind of hard uh, when you're sewing something with all these dark fabrics. And you can't see it on the front. My, I, I mean, I guess you kind of can if you pull it. And then the last row, this goes on the bottom, I believe. The bus took me forever. I was like, oh, the bus is never gonna end. So, I'm so excited about this. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to cut my sashings and my outer borders length of fabric. So tonight I need to figure out, what I will do is look at this, and like I'll say, okay, I need four one and a half inch strips, four one and a half inch, so eight one and a half, so that's 12 inches. So I'll cut probably a 14 inch length of fabric and only starch that. And now I'll show you the pop-up of my son, Will. So that's him on our living room floor. And what I asked him to do was lay all of them out exactly how Kelly has it on her blog. And then um, we laid it out in the living room and made sure he didn't want to move any of the rows and made sure everything was either you know face up or the way it was supposed to be. So I'm gonna be able to finish this one this year. Now, I hope Gina can quilt it before Christmas because it's gonna be one of his Christmas gifts, but I haven't even asked her, to be honest. I didn't know that I was gonna be able to get all of that done. It took pretty much all day Sunday and part of Saturday to get the blocks done. The blocks, I kinda had to figure out where I was even, I hadn't even worked on it in like two years. So I'm excited about that. So that's another one that's done. The next one that I worked on 
is the Sherry McConnell free block of the month for 2021. And this is block 11. So I have blocks one through 11 done. This is free and I did the 12 inch size. Now I'm gonna talk through how I'm going to assemble it and kind of my thought process on all of that. So I decided on this one, of course I, don't, I didn't write down the page number. I decided for setting to use this setting. And so obviously it's four by five, which is 20 blocks, but I only need to do three by four. So I'm gonna convert and figure out all of that. So the first thing I did, I had my paper somewhere, I just have to find it. It's in my stack of stuff. Here it is. There's a second paper right here. So what I did is I finished November and I wrote out that I need 31, sa I need 31 sashing squares and I started writing out all my fabrics I need to cut, my quilt center, my borders, what the finish size is. And when I was doing this, I was drawing it in electric quilt with just empty blocks so that I could check my math. So when I go back tonight, I know I need to finish my sashing and I am gonna put it all together except for that block 12 in the bottom right and just hope that I can, I'll just make whatever goes there kind of match that little section as far as fabrics touching. And so I figured out, okay, 58 by 73. And then I figured out I need to do a backing. So we'll zoom into this. I wanted to do a pieced backing. Oh, and I forgot the fabric. I was going to bring it, but I forgot. But what I decided is I had four leftover flying geese. So this is, I did this before Harry Potter. So I found my four leftover flying geese. Lori had a panel that's applique, and so this is already applique. So I just cut it out, added a little bit to it to get it to be six and a half. And then this came out to 16 and a half. Actually, it didn't come out to 16 and a half yet. I'm gonna add, I had to buy some fabric. I'm going to add more of this background to the edge to make it 16 and a half. So it gives it a stop point. And on the back there, and I'm gonna show it to you next week. I can piece it and show it to you. There is an all over patchwork. So I'm gonna use that out here. But what I did on my other sheet is I figure out my finish size and then I figure out I need 10 inches. So my finish needs to be 68 by 83 instead of 58 by 73. And I just start with centering the block and then add what I need, figure out what I need to order and then order it. And then hope that when I come back this weekend that I remember. Now on this one, I don't think I'm gonna starch these big pieces unless I magically end up with a lot of time. The other thing I did is I took one of my Sweetwater labels. I It has like an adhesive to it. So I put it on a Bella Solid just add it around it and then try to center it as much as possible. So this weekend, what I will be able to do for this quilt is finish up most of the top and all of the back. But I do have some tips on, on that also, on my sashing, I guess. So I did run out of fabric. So this was as much as I could get done. I think it's upside down. This is as much as I could get done over um, with the fabric that I had. So this is block one, block two, and then this is the sashing, and you can see that from here. Now what I am doing is I'm keeping the sashing all the same. I'm doing 31 different fabrics for the sashing post. The outer border is going to be this background, and my sashing is, my sashing and binding is here. And I'm gonna give you some tips for the binding fabric, uh, the sashing fabric, sorry. So 
because I'm a little kind of crazy with my stuff, and I went ahead and did this last night so you would see it. What I do, this is supposed to finish at three and a half by 12 and a half. So I just cut my fabric 13 inches. And it's, you can tell it's not lined up. I don't wanna have to pin. I don't wanna have to worry about anything. So it's wider. And these were supposed to be cut one and a half. So I cut the center one and a half, cut the outsides one and three quarters. And then this ruler, there's a three and a half by 12 and a half inch ruler by Creative Grids that's the same exact size that you need it to be. So I'm gonna put it a little bit closer to myself. So obviously I need it to be one and a quarter from the edge. So I just put it one and a quarter from the edge of the sashing and trim around. Now this is kind of, this to me is faster because I don't have to pin. If I had cut these 12 and a half inches instead of 13, I would have to pin before I start. And what I can do here is just, I literally did this in like 30 seconds. I just run it through the machine and it doesn't have to be exact because it's gonna be with this ruler. So those are some of the tricks that I do. And I will show you the rest of the blocks just in case you haven't seen those. And I'm going to do the first row in the same block order as her instructions. So blocks one through three. And then I don't have a design board and this quilt is kind of big. So I'll probably take this in my living room and lay it out just like I did the Harry Potter that you saw and then um, move my blocks around. But my goal is for this weekend is to have all of the sashing rows done and have everything done except for the bottom one. So basically I will have it sewn all the way because mine's three by four. I'll sew it all the way to there. And then I'll have this row done in the bottom and then all that, and I'll cut my borders. I've actually already cut my borders, length of fabric. And um, the way that I'm able to adjust is just keeping these little, little notes and the handwriting's horrible. Um, but I just kind of keep notes of where I'm at. And as I have them, I either leave them in the drawer where the quilt is, or you can put them in your book where the quilt is so you don't forget. But that's one thing that I do encourage you to do is to really think outside the box. Now, the only reason I'm not using Sherry's setting is I she's not gonna give it out until December. Well, I really want mine to be done because I wanna end the year off with everything done, so that's why I'm using this one. Plus, I think it's fun to always change up stuff. I don't, you'll notice that I never make anything 100% just like the designer. And doing this was really fun because I had the leftover flying geese. And when I do decide if I'm gonna do a piece backing, I kind of decide if I have enough time. And I definitely did because I already had these done and that was super easy to just add it. So. That one will be done mostly this weekend. And then this is the one that I'm gonna do last. This one is gonna take me the most amount of time. So when I decided how to end out 2021, I sat and thought about going easiest to hardest because the more you get done, the more you feel accomplished. So I didn't want to start with doing the dinosaur quilt because that's going to take me forever and I think I might have gotten discouraged. But this one I'm hoping to finish by the end of the year and have it as a Christmas gift. Now it's probably unrealistic to have it totally um, sewn and quilted and all of that because I'm not going to have it done until December. But I can always give it to my son and then quilt it later because he, he won't mind. So I'm making this quilt exactly like the pattern and I'll show you what I have done so far. At the beginning of the pattern, she has all of the, I guess they're like flowers or ferns or something. So those are all at the very, you do all of these at the beginning. Let me see. 
Okay, you do all of these at the beginning. And I've, so I've done these. And then once you have these done, you move to the dinosaur. So I did the first dinosaur. And you make it, I think you make it six times. It's been a while since I've made it. So, and then you put one of your, um, you put their pro whatever plant she calls for in there. So I'll show you the ones I've done. Now this one, I'm also using color 2600 thread. And I'm making it, I'm just following exactly how she has the pattern. And then last week I did show you a Swirling Stars completed. And that is that Gina. So that was actually the first thing I finished, finished. So my goal is to finish the dinosaur quilt this year. And so that would mean, this one is for Peyton. And the other one is for Will. Christopher and Emma, I told them that Will and Peyton will get one this year and then they'll get one next year for Christmas. But they do have like, hundred, we do have hundreds of quilts all over the house. So they're not like dying for one. So that's my third to the last to finish. My next one to finish is gonna be the hardest. Well, this is the hardest and I've been putting it off. So we started, I started this with all of you guys when Susan Aki's book, Sampler Spree came out. And this was her, um, like I took her, I just made a word doc out of it. But this was her plan for the whole year. And so I have notes, um, like it's supposed to be done by July 23rd, I think. But I never got to the last four. Oh, last three. Oh, I only have three. So I have browns, grays, and oranges to do. And I was using the Stitch Collection by Lori Holt. And this one, we might do a fun video where we put, we have a big uh, design board here where we lay out the blocks and decide where they're going to go. And then I take a photo and then go home and assemble it. But I'll show you the blocks I have so far. And let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 31 blocks. So maybe I can do like five or six this weekend in addition to everything else. And then I'm also hoping to make one dinosaur block this weekend. So each week I'm going to have a goal to do, I'm actually just going to stack them one on top of each other so that it's easier to put in the bin. But my goal is to just tackle a little bit each weekend. <clears throat> Sorry, I need to take a drink. So that, <clears throat> so that at the end of the year, I can actually be done. So I'm very excited that I will be. And another thing with finishing all my quilts for 2021 is I have eight drawers that I use in my, um, like on my cutting table. And I need those eight drawers to be empty so that I have, because my rule is I can add anything that won't fit in the drawers. So I can add more the more I finish, just based on the goals that I set for myself. So these are, and I know you guys have seen these before, but what, what I am going to do before I decide what because I haven't picked my colors here and Lori actually picked uh, most of my colors here um, yeah we can do a video on the design wall it'll probably be a fast forwarded video but my goal is I'm gonna take these into my living room my sewing room is too small and I'm gonna group them I'm actually not gonna do it I'm gonna have one of my kids do it um, I'll group it by color so I'll put all the grays together all the greens together all the okay what does this say do not photo using only showing in live stream okay who knows what that is i guess that might go on the back i leave myself notes but so my point is before i finish the last three colors i'm gonna group it by color on the floor figure out which color i have the least amount of like if i have because i don't i mean i'll do a couple of brown gray um, brown and gray blocks, but there's no orange in this fabric collection. 
So I'll divide it by color, figure out what colors are lacking, what fabrics I haven't used enough of, and that's how I will decide the remaining. And then I'll do a FaceTime with Lori and she'll help me pick the colors. And I used Stitch because the scale is very small and of course I love the colors and it has enough colors to be able to do a quilt like this. This would be a hard quilt to do if you didn't have enough range of colors. And if I get to where I don't feel like I have enough, I mean, I have a plenty of other Lori fabric I could use and add in. And then this one, I'll show you the setting that I'm gonna do and kind of what I'm thinking for the setting. I love this one. We just did a video yesterday on this block. It's of course not out yet, but it was fun. And with these, I did kind of, you know, build the blocks. I took her instructions, but kind of, you know, made it fit the way I piece. So there are my little blocks. I'm keeping them in my little bucket. And I just check off as I finish them. So there's that. And then the setting... I'm gonna show you inside a little bit where you can see better. I think it's in the front, yeah. And I spiral bounded this at Home Depot or Office Depot. Oh my gosh, Home Depot. I'm a, yeah, I'm real, I'm with it today. Okay, so I wanted to show you this. So I have used throughout the same background. Let me see if I can find a big one. So I used this 9940 pewter for um, the background on the whole thing. So that will be, in my sashing, that will be this white. So I'll use that same background here. But I need to pick a fabric here to set it. So I have not decided that um, the blocks are six inches finished, and I just need to figure out what I'm going to put here. So I'm going to let Lori pick that for me because I'm too scared to pick it. I was kind of thinking pink because I love pink so much. I just don't think that's going to look good, though. So I might have to pick maybe something from her Be Basics or something that wasn't used in the blocks at all. Um, the quilt, when it is finished, finishes at, eighty three by eighty three. So it's pretty big. And then um, one of the questions that I see is, how do I decide when I press open or when I press to one side? Well, this one I did such a long time ago that I guess I pressed them all open. And I usually keep that note in here, so I'll remember when I go back. If the blocks are small, I'll press open. If it's something that I just want to do quick and fast and they're 12-inch blocks, I'll press to one side. So really, how I decide which way I'm going to press is the size of the blocks and um, kind of the mood I'm in. Um, and then the last quilt that I may or might may not get done. I'm not going to promise that I'm going to get this one done. This is... Not in here, because I didn't start it this year. So I started this in like 2020, I think, or tw actually 2019, I think. So this is a Halloween fig sampler pattern by Fig Tree Quilts, and it was offered as a block of the month at Fat Quarter Shop. So I, of course, bought it, and I have done through month eight. So I have decided, and I've been kind of, as I go, apparently, I've been piecing blocks together. I have zero idea where I'm at on this. So because of that, but I did kind of peek. Ooh, and I did applique blocks. Look, and I must have had a button to go with it. I'm going to put that button in here when it's finished. Let me see. So this is where I'm at. Now, I haven't looked at this quilt in several years, at least two years. So to go back and finish it's going to be a lot. But I'm thinking if I finish the others, maybe I can finish this one. I mean, hopefully. 
I can aim for it. If I don't, then it's just gonna take up another drawer until it's done. And then I'll have one less thing I can add. So they're probably organized by um, the months that were that they were done in. And you can tell on this one, I obviously made all these pieces bigger and then trimmed down and I need to trim those off. So um, this is kind of a, I really hope I can get it done, but I am not gonna promise myself that I'm gonna get it done, but I'm gonna cross my fingers that maybe I can get it done. And I do need to buy backing because I did notice I don't have a backing fabric bought. So it's good that they re-release the, the fabric. So that is my um, shot in the dark, hoping that I can get this done. This one is an advanced quilt because it has lots of pieces and um, applique. I mean, that's like the last time I appliqued, I think. Let's see. Let me even see how I did it. I don't even remember. Oh, let's see what I did. So I hand appliqued it down and I must have used Lori's, uh, Lori's um, web, webbing. Sew so it interfacing because I can tell and then I hand quilted it. So I'm excited about this one. So that's kind of my 2021 goals. And it did take me quite a few hours to sit and go through my book, figure out where I was. Now, if I hadn't had that surgery, I would not be in this position. A lot of this would have already been done because I do set weekly goals and stick to them. But I had no idea that I was gonna be able to not sew for two months. Like there was no chance that I was gonna be able to sew. So that really put me back. So because of that, I just decided I'm gonna de-stash, organize, figure out where I need to be, set my goal, start over and set my goals again so that I can finish them. And then the last quilt I wanna show you, I actually had Teresa make for me because I bought it and wanted to make it, but I couldn't. So this one is the Sincerely Yours quilt that is a pattern by Sherry McConnell. And the sew along has now ended. I'm gonna show it to you on the table. So the sew along has now ended, but I really wanted this quilt. And I love the dot. Oh my gosh, I love that dot so much. And I really wanted this quilt, so I paid Teresa to make it for me because I thought my 2021 just won't be complete if I um, don't get this quilt made. And plus, I wanna be able to put it out for Valentine's Day. So we'll just pull it across so you can see it. And you can see she pieces just as good as I do. So nobody will ever know that I didn't make it. Okay, and then now I'm going to answer all the questions about 2021 and then give you a sneak preview for 2022. And um, I'm happy to answer any questions you have. So we'll go to the bottom. Does anybody remember the website Kimberly uses to purchase her presser foot? Um, yes, primitivegatherings.us.com. Primitivegatherings.us, it's so it's Primitive Gatherings. What information do you put on your labels? Um, I purchase labels from Sweetwater Company and they just have my name and sometimes they have the year. Now, I really need to, uh, I don't have enough labels, so kind of, uh, I might need to up my subscription to two because I'm making so many quilts that I can barely keep up. But usually just my name and then the year sometimes. I prefer it to have the year, but because I'm kind of out of labels, a lot of them don't have the year. Have you ever designed a quilt from an antique quilt? Yes, we do that here all the time, all the time. Um, so our classic and vintage video series is basically all based on antique quilts. I've noticed that Kimberly has been putting labels on the front of her quilts. Is there a reason? 
Um, so I just have been doing it for the fun of it, or I just don't think that there's a place on the back for it, or I think it would disrupt the back for that cat quilt or kitty corn quilt. I think my kids are going to love it, but they're going to have the, when they use it, they'll use it with the cat side up. So I thought, well, they're not going to want a label of my name on there. That's just weird. So I just, and I always want to do something different to be able to show you ideas and just kind of just different. Louise says she's getting ready to quilt the Christmas mystery. What color was used by you all to quilt it? So you can contact Gina Tell at Thread Graffiti and she can tell you because she quilted them for us. And it was kind of a grayish, variegated, very light gray, I believe. The Pokey Little Pineapple. Kimberly, you're usually so speedy on completing the quilt. What was the slowdown to this one? Uh, to this one, uh, to all those, oh, the, the, well, the, the, I can tell you the Harry Potter, I just wasn't very motivated by it, it wasn't, I don't, I don't understand Harry Potter, so that was kind of the slowdown, the, uh, Halloween one, I think I just got busy, the others was just my surgery, and, um, it wasn't just my surgery, but my boys, um, participated in a basketball league, and it was an hour from our house, and they're in, they were in different ones. So I was basically five hours a day, an hour away on Saturdays and Sundays. So that all my kids also slowed me down. For the binding on my quilts, um, I am going to use, for Harry Potter, I'm going to use the purple, the mauve. I'm gonna use that same. And then on the back, I'm gonna put the a very light gray, 90 inch wide, I, the skew is like C390 dash silver, I think, or something like that. So I'm going to just put um, like a very light silver on the back. Life as a mom. Does Kimberly start with pre cuts or is there a better way other than a fat quarter? I either usually start with a layer cake or a fat quarter bundle, or if it's Lori's fabric, I buy a half yard of the whole line because I use it in several quilts. If it's anybody else's, I'll either use a layer cake or a fat quarter bundle. Will there be a Black Friday sale? Yes. I can't give any hints as to what it's going to be, but yes, we will have one. Kimberly, did you show or talk about the low volume quilt you were doing? Yes. Okay. So I was realistic and knew I wasn't going to be able to finish it. So I asked Teresa to finish it for me. So Teresa is finishing it for me. And um, I'm going to show it to you, and, and that way it gets done, and there's enough time to give it to my sister-in-law. So, yes, it's going to be done. What will you do with all of these whips when you finish? So, some of them I keep at work. Some of them I use to decorate my house. Some of them I'll give, like, I'll take it home and show my kids and say, does anybody like this one? And if they do, they'll take it to their room, and they'll keep it there for a couple weeks and then switch it out. Um, so, either here as decoration, um, home for decoration or for my kids, or sometimes I gift them, like I'm giving my sister-in-law a quilt, kind of depends. Everyone, I've given everybody a quilt already, so it's kind of like, I don't really have anybody else left to give a quilt to. Does Kimberly recommend a binding tool to fold and iron strips fast? So I use this machine that's now discontinued. Um, I'm, I don't even know what it's called. Simplicity Bias Tape Maker. Now, it's discontinued, but that's what I use. Before Lori's webbing, what did I use? I have her webbing, but also have several types of the same, but don't know which one to use. So before Lori's webbing for applique, I would just needle turn. I would just turn it under and then stitch. I wouldn't use, I've never used any other type of webbing. Grandma Funk, our grandson would love the dinosaur quilt. Could a beginner do it? I'm so new at this. You could, it will be a very big challenge. There are so many tiny pieces and there are, I, if I was a beginner, I wouldn't attempt it. But I can show you in the front of the book. Um, in the front of the book, she does give an option for a smaller version. So you could attempt that, but it is a lot of one inch pieces, one and a half inch pieces. It's a lot of tiny, tiny piecing. And with it, I have been using the seam align glue. Um, let me find the picture of the small one. So she does have this color. I wanna 
she does have a smaller option. And that one finishes, let me try to figure out what size that finishes at. Oh, 48 by 48, the small one would finish at. Is there gonna be a Socialites for 2022? Yes, there will be. It's gonna be in the fall. Cheryl asks, can I do a tutorial or segment on how to repair antique quilts? I have one with bow tie blocks and I'm lost at how to repair it. I have no idea how to repair it. Um, so I don't know. Katie said, at what point does Kimberly put a check mark next to the quilt? When it's complete or just the blocks? When it goes to Gina Tell. When it's quilted and done, I'll put a check mark. Kimberly is using the picture day layout, a quilting life. Kimberly is using the picture day layout and a quilting life block of the month, correct? Yes. Did you see that Sweetwater has a So Holiday subscription, just doesn't have a name? No, I didn't. I'll have to look. I might have to buy that. No, I had no idea. I was gifted my husband's grandmother's quilt. Should I add a label? She sewed it. Her neighbor, Miss Maudie, quilted it. Yeah, you could add a label. I would hand stitch it down, though. Anne is asking, when I machine quilt, do I use the same thread on the top and the bottom? So when I have uh, my long arm quilter do it, yes, I do, but I don't ever quilt anything. Will I be getting in more rose and bloom block of the months? Um, we will add some to the site if people don't pay. So um, probably 20 people won't pay and then those will go online. You could, um, yeah, just watch for that. Kate, when you have finished the smaller beautiful quilts, what do you do with them? Hang them? Um, the smaller ones, they either go to my kids or I decorate with them, one of the two. Have you thought about donating some of your larger quilts to charity, like a homeless shelter, church, or something like that? Um, no, I would probably donate them to, I'd probably, what I do with some quilts is I auction them off for Make-A-Wish. I auction several off a year for Make-A-Wish, and that's how I prefer to um, do that, just because I love the Make-A-Wish organization. Gwen, I'm at an Aditya Sitar retreat now in California. Thank you for the door prizes. Mesh bags are fantastic. Oh, well, have fun. That sounds fun. What size quilt do I give away as a gift? Usually like a lap. The one that my sister-in-law is getting is huge, though. It probably will fit her bed. How do you feel about mixing different fabric, fabric manufacturers like Moda, Wyndham, Kaufman without starching? Oh, I think... On that, you either starch or you don't starch. I don't think it matters if you mix manufacturers. I think they all shrink the same. Why do you never use colors as backgrounds instead of always white? So one thing about the live stream is I really want the live stream to be things that I love and that I'm inspired by. And so when I show you stuff, I show you what I love. So I like white, I guess. Um, yeah, so I just sew what I love. And I mean, several of those quilts don't have the, both of the ones for my kids both have a Bella, one has a Bella solid and one has a Kona solid as a background. So there are times when there's not white. Um, Karen is asking if the wings and the binding on the Riley Blake bird quilt are the same, and they are. I have the Halloween figs quilt block of the month, but haven't started it. Not very good at applique, but was planning to replace those blocks with pieced ones. Would that look strange? No, that would look great. When will I announce Designer Mystery 2022? The very first week of January 2022. Are all of your kids interested in quilts? Um, they all like quilts, but I mean interested. One of them, one of, two of them like love them. One is kind of like so-so. And then my teenager is like, yeah, I like it if it can like fit the bed. Like she she doesn't want it to just want it. She wants it to like have a functionality. So, but I wouldn't say they're overly interested. I do try to, and this may sound really weird to a lot of people, but I do feel like I have a work life and a home life and I don't want my kids to feel like they have to grow up and run this company or they have to be the same interest as me. 
like I want my kids to be their own person and I try not to um, I try not to like push my stuff on them if that makes sense um, and thank you for the super chats from Piggy um, Valeria Bauer and Janet and sisters awesome so thank you so now I'm gonna show you a 2022 and kind of my plans So one of the things I did, I started this about two weeks ago, is I decided that I would go through and um, figure out kind of what my plans are for 2022. But my rule is I cannot start any of this until all of 2021 is done. So it gives me a goal and gives me motivation to finish last year's. So my very first project that I'm going to work on is the Heartfelt Charity Quilt. So I need to buy the kit and the backing. I've divided it by the block names and then as I finish each block I'll put a check mark so I can always remember where I'm at. And um, this will be sewn on live stream each time once a month. Brick House is going to be our 2022 Scrappy Quilt. It does have 16 blocks. The free pattern will come out in January 2022. Um, I obviously already have it because I work here, but as I make each block, I'm gonna write the fabric collection in. That way, if I use a fabric collection like again, I can look and see if I've already made a block, and that way I don't I only have I want it to have 16 different fabric collections. I want each block to be one fabric collection and to not um, reuse, if that makes sense. So I, I will write down all 16 here. And with that, I will tell you that the three and a half by 12 and a half and the two and a half by 12 and a half inch ruler are gonna be um, great to make this because it's scrappy. And these two rulers are gonna be um, really uh, useful when I make that. Okay, so Sherry McConnell always has a free block of the month. I don't know, um, I don't know anything about it. I don't know, I just know based on last year. So I don't have fabric picked. I wrote down Beyond Bella or One Fine Day as possibilities. And usually she does 12 blocks. So I penciled that in. And of course I have no idea what I'm gonna make with it, but we'll see. Stronger Together is going to be back for 2022. We worked with Charisse Spain to design a really awesome quilt. And I am going to make mine, and I've already picked my fabrics. I'm going to be using the Creativity Glows fabric by Moda and One Beyond Bella Solid. I've picked my fabrics, and I'm going to auction off my quilt to UNCF at the end of that event in February. And um, I know the block names, and as I do each of the blocks, I will make a check mark. And this one's going to be really fun and easy, and um, this is probably when I finish all of 2021. This is going to be the one I start first, because the blocks are very easy, and I think one of my sons is going to like the colors I picked. So his name is kind of on it. The next one that I have um, for... 2022 is Flea Market Baskets. That is a new book by Lori. And I am going to sew the 12, I'm not gonna make the whole quilt. I'm gonna buy the quilt kit. Actually, I'm not gonna buy the quilt kit because I already have Flea Market left over from Sherry McConnell's event. I'm going to just pick a ba one background to use, but I'm gonna make the 12 basket blocks that end up six inches. I'm gonna put it in a different setting and um, show it to you guys. So that's planned for 2022. Chicken salad, this is all a secret right here, but chicken salad is a free um, sew along that Lori is doing with Riley Blake. We're offering a, a quilt kit, but there are 12 blocks and the 12 blocks finish at 12 inches. So I am going to so 12 different blocks that Lori is going to announce on her blog and then um, make this. So that's scheduled for next year. 
uh, Pat Sloan this week. She announced the Sweet Dreams free block of the month. And it is going to be January 5th through May 11th. And that means I need to, uh, I need to figure out what collection. So I have a couple of collections in mind and I am really struggling with coloring it and uh, I'm really having a hard time pick the collect picking the collection, but it will get picked. Now, after that, these are all things you can't see. So these are things, after that is things that are gonna be videos that I can't show you. So from here, I start here and I plan the year. But from here, I figure out when I'm gonna show this on live stream. So, uh, let's see, January. So the first Friday of January, I'm gonna show you Pat Sloan's first block. The second week, I'm gonna show you Sherry's block of the month, number one, and then Pat Sloan's number two. This is just an appointment I have. So I schedule it out by week. And by doing that, I either schedule it based on my schedule or the designer's sew along schedule, either one. But I do it so that I can space it out so it works for me. So I am very much a planner. I almost over plan, but I wanted you to at least see like where I am. And then these are gonna be the things that I need to have finished, finished but it helps me get things done because I can visually see, you know, oh my gosh, the last week of February, I've got a lot to do. And as I do them, I um, put a little check mark. And, oh, I didn't mean to put this in here. These, oh, this is even upside down. These are the new Busy Bee sticky notes. They're arriving in December and they're on the coming soon page. But I have five packs available now for me because they were prototypes. Oh, uh, let's see. Yeah, so of course I'm using the pink, but there are three different colors. So that's 2022. And then after this, I'm going to show you the what's new stuff. I'm going to skip the next two sections and add those next week. I'm going to answer questions first, though, and then I'm going to show you what's new. Sonia is asking, when will Stronger Together quilt pattern be available for purchase? So the quilt kits are gonna come out in mid-December. They're gonna be made with, uh, she has two colorways, um, past, like one's pastel and one is, uh, what's the other one called? Vivid. One is vivid and one is pastel. Kits are coming out in mid-December. Patterns will come out in January. Kevin and I will be donating $7,000 to the UNCF Foundation. We will also have a donation page that goes directly to them so the money never even has to come to us. The pattern's gonna be free this time and I'm gonna auction my quilt. And now that I said I'm gonna auction it, I might have to make two because I think my son's gonna like that quilt. Um, will I have a new sew along soon? Oh my gosh, I just showed you all of these. So. As far as Fat Quarter Shop for 2022, we have lots of sew-alongs planned. One that I know of for sure is June, one is July, and one starts September. So we, and then the Stronger Together is February. Um, Heartfelt is January. Sherry McConnell's, yeah, lots of stuff. And then we also have Flea Market that's gonna be a sew-along. Do I start a planner every year? Yes, I always start a new cross-stitch journal a new quilting journal, and a new planner every year, no matter what. How do I decide what projects you're going to be choosing for the next year? So I pick it based on fabric that I like, events that I like, quilts that I want, um, things that we're doing here. I um, Obviously, it's my company, so most of the stuff we do I like already. So I just kind of know in advance what we're doing and just plan it that way. But because I put it in my planner, and you'll notice I have it divided by item, I can go through and just check off as I've done each item, and it helps me kind of break it out visually. And if you have it broken out this way, once you start seeing check marks, you're gonna feel more accomplished and want to keep going. Could I please talk about a ribbon runs through it block of the month? So I think we showed that quilt on camera. I think we did. Let me see. I 
I think we showed it, but I'm not going to be sewing that one. And so that is very, um, very 1800s. Yeah, we showed that quilt on live stream. So if you want to see it on live stream, we did show it on a previous live stream, but I'm not going to sew that one. It's 1800s fabric, and that's just not my thing. Will there be a pre-sale of Lori Holt's boxed kits for summer sew-alongs? All of her boxed kits we put on the coming soon page to be notified when they come in. We don't pre-sell those. What am I watching? I love to hear what you have queued up. Tonight, Dateline is going to be amazing. It's going to be so amazing. When there is a Dateline or 2020 that I love, I okay, only one of my four kids has a phone, first of all. The other two have iPads. The other three have iPads, so I can text them. I will text them at about four o'clock today and I will say from this time to this time, my door in my bedroom will be locked. Please do not interrupt because tonight, because they can't stop talking. So tonight's Dateline is going to be great. I have watched, I, Sundance Now has an app and I watched a couple of things on Sundance Now. There's not been anything out great lately, I will tell you. I've been struggling to find stuff nothing really great out there right now um but uh, dateline tonight i've already, i watched this morning before i came in i watched the um there's a the you know how they put the trailer out that the trailer i watched the trailer and i'm so excited because john um from hidden true crime is going to be in there and i'm so excited um i'm nervous about cutting binding the fabric is striped do i have any tips <laughs> i would i would iron it really good and then I would probably, instead of layering it, like folding it over, it, it'll be folded over from salvage to salvage. But I probably wouldn't do, wouldn't layer it this way. I would probably just cut each strip one at a time. Have I ever considered doing a modern quilt series? Stronger Together is going to be modern. And my low volume quilt that I did last year that you're going to see soon is modern. So you'll see I throw modern in every now and then. But I just authentically don't love modern. And you're going to see that the Stronger Together is a modern design. But I made it very Kimberly-ish. So, and the reason I want to be able to do that is to show you that if, because we, because she designed that and it's beautiful, but it's art gallery, it's, you know, I, I want it to be more something that are my colors. So I just change what I, what I want. How do I decide what to put in the flash sales? Kevin orders specifically for flash sales. And he does all of that. Oh, hi, Christopher Thompson. Hi. How do you know how much fabric to starch before cutting? So before I start a project, the first thing I'll do is whatever pre-cut I'm using, I will starch all of that. And then I will starch my border, binding, backing, all that later. How many yards of background do you purchase when you don't have a quilt in mind just because you like it? Five yards. I bought some of the acorn piecing glue, but I can't get it to come out. Is there a trick? Yes, there is. Let's see if we can find the glue and a pin. Okay, we're gonna go to the top camera real quick so I can try to find it. Okay, this is how you do it. Sorry, <laughs> it's like, uh, mine always comes out, but you can do this with any glue. I actually have another glue down here I can do it with. So here's a pin. Well, first of all, I'll show you that it just comes out. Mine just comes out gonna go on the table okay there goes my glue so mine just automatically comes out I'll just wipe it hold on I have, a, I have a napkin here oh wait this is interfacing okay I'll just wipe it on this that's fine if it doesn't come out you just put a pin but just mine always comes out but I always leave this on top if you don't leave that on it's gonna dry out put a pin in there and then you throw your pin away or, I mean, you could wipe it off with down, with Dawn soap. And then like this glue, same thing, you just put a pin in there. And just kind of wiggle it around. So that's how you get glue out, or that's how I get. Okay, Carmen is asking, can you quilt with cotton fabric on the front and flannel on the back? Yes. 
which white fabric do I use as a background? I use a lot of them. 20708-36 is my favorite, but we're waiting for more to come in stock. And for Brick House 2022, I already know that's what I'm gonna use. So um, that's my favorite white on white, but I have, I like Bella. I really am excited about the Bella, Beyond Bella white cross hatch that's coming. I usually like the white on white that's in the designer's collection, like Bonnie and Camille's is always really nice. April Rosenthal's are really nice. So um, I try to use, if I can, what's in the collection. If I can't, then I find something else. Okay, so now I'm gonna show you um, what is new at Fat Quarter Shop. So this actually showed up yesterday. So excited about this. So I am definitely, these are going home with me. So this is Fresh Fig Favorites, and it is different prints that Joanna has used throughout the years, and Moda divided it into two separate bundles. So if you're looking to make a background or low volume quilt, or if you just want the colors. So I'm actually really excited they did that because that makes it more affordable. And it's called Fresh Fig Favorites. The next one that I thought was really cute was Cooper and we are about to have a giveaway. So um, that's exciting. So this is called Cooper and my, it's way too um, juvenile for my kids at this point, but it is, I love these colors. So that's awesome. And this showed up yesterday so we have been we have been waiting on this this iron for a year and a half I already bought mine so I'm not sure how long they're gonna last just because of that and then the next thing that arrived is Tula pink daydreamer we are offering this in a one yard bundle and a half yard bundle and a fat quarter bundle. So if you're interested, pre-order it by Sunday night. That will be shipping Monday, Tuesday. And I'm gonna show you all the prints. So again, one yard bundle, half yard bundle, fat quarter bundle, and this will be shipping if you pre-bought it Monday, Tuesday, and if you did not pre-buy it, it will be online for sale on Monday. And I wanted to show you the one yard bundle spread out because the prints are scaled big. So this is a flamingo. And um, everyone who likes modern loves Tula Pink. So, and this one's, I really like the aquas in this and the blues and the touch of pink. Like if I was gonna make something with this, I would take the green out. But I'm sure all every, okay, and then this is the print that we, Kevin and I think is gonna be the most popular. It's like, I don't know if that's a tiger or a leopard or a, oh, it's a cheetah. Yeah, see, I don't even know. This pink, oh my gosh. And that's got some orange in it, but it's so, I like that for a binding. And then this one would be, this would work as a background but it's ombre, so it maybe it wouldn't work for a background. It would work for a backing. And if there's any of these um, that you wanna see bigger, you can click on the website and then our images will show that. So again, one yard bundles, half yard bundles, back quarter bundles, and right now we're gonna do a giveaway. So when the video ends in about one minute, you're gonna answer these three questions to be entered to win. First, you have to like the video and subscribe to our channel. And these are my three questions, and we're gonna give away three of these Tula Pink Fat Quarter Bundles, and we will announce it um, on social media and next week in the video. So your three questions are, who is your favorite fabric designer? What is your favorite fabric theme? Do you like traditional or modern or anything else? And what pattern is on your bucket list? Our winners will be picked Thursday, November 18th. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys next week.